Ah, how do you describe the summer nets? What, what more could you want? Horsepower, beautiful cars, beautiful women, lots of drinks, let's party! This is the first time at Summer Nats for the Toronto. It's actually our first time at Summer Nats. The Summer Nats is more than a car show, it's a way of life, it's a festival. This is the granddaddy of all. I've been a lot of car shows but nothing this big. You've got so much going on. You could spend two, three days here, and it's great to bring your car here, yeah. You think there's some unique cars at this event? You should see some of the unique characters at this event. We've got the V8s, we've got the girls, we've got the whole lot. <laughs> Some people are born to sing, some people are born to play tennis. We're born to be street machines. I guess a street machine is a modified car in a traditional sense. It focuses on the cars of the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. I just love it. Passion now, money started about a year and a half ago, I love it. I fancy myself as a bit of a burnout man myself in them days. It's passion and I've said to a lot of people, I think this is the bathest of street machine. To be grand champion, it is more than just the car. I don't care if I win another award, I want that. Them days it wasn't as, as hard for as it is nowadays. Nowadays, you've got to be sharp as you have the best car, be the best driver to win a burning hit contest at the summer. Night. I have never ever seen anywhere like this at all, ever. Street Machine. If you don't read Street Machine, follow their YouTube channel or visit their website for great content. What are you doing with your life? Nothing. That's what you're doing. For all the latest on all things Street Machine, visit your local news agent, buy a magazine subscription on their website now. They got all sorts of mad stuff. Turbo taxis, LS powered MX-5s and the best Street Machines Australia has to offer. Do it now. Best thing you can do with your car with your clothes on, I suppose. <laughs> I remember speaking to Chick probably 30 years ago up at Queensland and he had this vision that he was going to put together this car event. There was nothing like it. So I got told about Exhibition Park, it was called Natex those days. Now bear in mind I didn't really have any event organisational skills but I saw the benefit of this joint. I, I saw places that you could cruise around on, you could go all the way around the block, butte roads, buildings to put exhibitions in. The street Machine scene was run by a, a club and a council and all club guys and it needed a bit of a change of direction. Chick put his hand up and decided to, to run with it and became the Street Machine the Summer Nats. Came up with a name, ran it in summer. Nats, short for national. The first event was was pretty damn good, to be quite honest. Um, you know, it was a big punt that I was taking. We got up 65,000 people overall over the three to four days. But what a lot of people don't realise is that how much I'd stuck my neck out because uh, after all the bills were paid, I ended up $200,000 in debt. So we've been with, with Chick right from the start. 
and I think uh, we, we paid for the burnout pad the first year. The Summonats is a car festival. It's not a car show, it's a festival. And a festival is a celebration, and it's as much about the people as it is about the cars. If you've not been here before, the Summonats is a bit like a new country town has just been built in a place where everyone who lives in that place loves cars. Well, I guess it's a very tribal thing, you know, the, the people who are into these kind of cars are different. They are a bit eccentric, or we are a bit eccentric. My name's Adam Slurrick, I'm driving a 67 HR Holden Ute. I've caught it numbnuts. It's an old, bit of an old turd, I caught the old turd, but it gives me a giggle. We tend to come from regional areas, because that's where you've got the sheds to build the cars. Oh, mate, it's exhilarating, it's fun, it's fast. It's pretty hard to die doing it. It's great to get together once a year to, to muck up, have a bit of fun. No matter what you do, whatever your hobby is, you're going to spend money. So we spend our money on cars, other people love fishing, other people love horses. We decided that this is what we love, so this is what we could do. And that's all they want to do is talk about them. Uh, my name is Debbie Gray. Uh, I drive a 1968 Chevrolet Camaro. Drive them. Work on them. Lapping Main Street at the Summer Nats is the heart and soul of this event. You know, you have all different tribes of car makers and car enthusiasts here, but they all get together on the cruise route. And that's where, you know, our 80, 90,000 people will stand around that looking at it and just loving it. It's hard to understand until you've been here. Yeah, I'm Danny, uh, I'm from Adelaide. We're at the Summer Nats uh, 2012. Uh, I bring my car here every year. I've been coming here every year since 2000 and I uh, love it. I'm never going to miss it. It's like a religion. Generally there's no burnouts, uh, the cruise has got pretty tame over the last few years. Uh, in the early days of the summer nats, uh, it was rather mayhem, everyone was sort of top gears on the spot and it was like a burnout cop outside the burnout cop, you know, and uh, even in sections like this, guys will be doing donuts. You can see some marks here from when someone's done donuts, but uh, they tamed it right down, they've got pretty much security guards every 50 metres and some let you do one, some, some don't, so uh, this year they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty tight on the security. 99.5 FM, it is Radio Revhead. G'day, Richie Howlett with you. Thursday morning at Street Machine Magazine, Summer Nats number 25, proudly supported by Rare Spares. 12 o'clock, the big cruise down Northbourne Avenue. I am looking forward to that, it's going to be huge. It's going to be an interesting day and lots of fun here at Street Machine Magazine, Summer Nats. It's the Chrome Jubilee edition. Can't wait for the weekend. There's one thing that ties us all together. It's, it's the notion of being able to cruise down the street. You see cars here that you won't see driving anywhere else. So that's what I like about it. You just see cars that are off their head driving around that you'll never see on the street or anything, you know? So yeah, that's what I like about it. Just, yeah, it's a, just a mad time, you know? It's a celebration of our car culture. Like, it's a real thing, Aussie car culture. It's as real as Aussie pub music and V8 supercars, these institutions. <laughs> For years and years and years, people have said to me, you know, do you think you'll ever do the Super Cruise again? But the Super Cruise grew, grew too big. It wasn't stopped by the government or the police, it was stopped by me. I saw how difficult it was going to become to maintain what was a, a sensational thing. And so the easiest thing to do is just not do it. They've got to realise how good it is for Canberra. All the people that come here, all the money it brings in. It's a great turnout. And all the kids down there especially. You know, because a lot of little kids down there that can't afford to get in and they can see the cars that way. This is the first time since, oh, God knows how long. They had it years and years ago, but they banned it. So it's the first time it's come back and I think it'll be a great promotion of some of that. The purpose of today, Kay, is to be safe and have fun. The aim of what we're doing today is to do a city cruise down Northbourne Avenue 
I think there's a lot of enthusiastic drivers around and uh, this is really an opportunity for them to show off their cars but also show the fact that they can be responsible. This is about showcasing uh, people's vehicles. It'll be a slow procession down Northmont Avenue. Uh, we've got quite a few members uh, on motorcycles and in cars to maintain control of the uh, motorcade uh, as well as um, the crowds that we're expecting to watch the event. What a fantastic event to see the cars back on Northbourne Avenue for 19 years, before my time. To be able to go back and do the Super Cruise today was a great thing. I, I didn't think personally that I was going to be able to go in it because I had a lot to do. And Andy Lopez gave me a strict order that I needed to be out there, and I'm glad that he did. I just saw all those people and, and uh, you know, the celebration aspect. All those people cheering and waving and calling out congratulations and everything like that. That was very cool. I wouldn't have missed that for anything. Do you love your car? How much do you love your car? Proof that you love your car is if you look after it with the best car care products on the market. Meguiar's, Meguiar's. If you've spent thousands building your car, don't care for it with crap, 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 crap quality products. Look after it with the best. The best. You should also use the best to keep yourself clean. Super thick and sudsing. Whee! See this? This is the best. The best! <coughs> Are these shit ads over yet? Seriously. Oh, well, we've got a breakdown. See, that's why you don't drive a late model Commodore. Right there. That's why you got to kick. Stick the old school Ford, boys. This is what happens when you drive a late model Commodore. My name's Owen Webb, I'm the Chief Steward. I've actually been doing this for 25 years. Well, we judge here in three categories. We judge in elite class, street class, which is obviously more the street cars, and tough street. And in elite class, we judge over six, six areas, and that's broken up into engine bay, undercarriage, body, paint, interior, and then an overall, like an impact, stands for how that whole car looks as a package. To be grand champion, it is more than just the car. Grand champion is all about the car that scores well. You need to get in the top 10, realistically. You can do it out of the 20, but the 10. And then you need the people to vote for it, so it needs to have a bit of in your face. It wouldn't mean the same unless I did go for grand champion. If I had my car here, it wouldn't matter what it was, I'd be going for it. That's to me what Summer Nats is about, having fun in your car. The car has to judge well people's choice, it's got to be popular with the public, and then they've got to do two driving events, one grass driving event and then one bitumen driving event which is the go to woe. The importance of Grand Champion for a show like this is extremely high for a car to have top quality and actually drive and perform, which is what you want a car to do instead of they're looking pretty on a stand. Grand Champion is something I think I've wanted for probably 10 years. It's what I've built it for. I don't care if I win another award, I want that. Well, my name's uh, Charlie Hutton. You know, I'm a uh, custom car builder from uh, Idaho uh, in the United States. This is my very first Summer Nats, and it's been a great experience. There's, there's so many neat things that go on around here that doesn't happen in America. Everybody tell me about the burnout contest. So when I first got my first break, man, I beelined it over to see the burnout contest, and that was the coolest thing ever. See, that photo was street machine. Absolutely. Look at that. Look, Mom. No hand. The Summer Nats is so exciting. It's amazing just because how excited the people are. You know, I mean, the participants and then just the spectators. You know, I mean, you see, it's, it's like a family event. 
you know, and, and it's fun because, you know, for the kids, it's exciting to see these cars romping and doing burnouts and stuff. And, and so it just, it, it brings enthusiasm to the industry. You got to come to the Summer Nats. Adam Barnes, H2 Monaro called Hard HT. I've unveiled it at Summer Nats 23, and basically the whole car was similar, but there's a few things we didn't get around to doing. Two years later, and this is exactly how we want it with the brush trim and you know painted bumper bars and different wheels. I had the vision in mind, like to, to how it is now, sort of the based off the pro touring thing in the states, what they're doing in the states, so more drivable car. Kids get in the back and yeah, misses and go for a drive, yeah, all the time. <laughs> Basically the engine's a LSX 440, which is based off an LS motor, like a, a Commodore type motor in Australia, with a 101 mil single turbo. Couldn't count the time, my wife probably could. <laughs> um, so yeah, just happy to be here. <laughs> It's Friday morning here at Street Machine Magazine, Summer Nats number 25. Uh, judging in the Maguire's Pavilion, open now. There's show and shine on the main arena, and that's just today. There's plenty of live entertainment for you tonight, and it's just going to be absolutely fabulous. Get yourself ready for a big day here at Street Machine Magazine, Summer Nats number 25. It's the Chrome Jubilee edition, and it is going to go off. Chlamydia test. Nobody else is ever going to pay for your wee. My name's Sue. I'm a health promotion officer from the Stamp Out Chlamydia Project. Uh, this weekend at Summonats, we're offering a $10 cash incentive for people to participate in chlamydia testing. Chlamydia is an STI that quite often has no symptoms and affects approximately 1 in 14 people under the age of 30 in the ACT who are sexually active. Yesterday, at last... We were quite surprised the first year that we were here with the amount of people that wanted to participate um, and the friendly um, and engaged people that just wanted to talk to us about everything to do with their sexual health. Well, I actually it's think it's great. People like are scared to go do it. If they're getting paid for it, they'll be more interested in doing it. Yeah, definitely. It's pretty cool. We take that back to the pathology at Canberra Hospital. It's tested for chlamydia and we contact people a couple of weeks later if they're positive and support them to get treatment. My name's Lisa Chinock from Hobart in Tasmania. Been coming to Summonats since Summonats 9. I've owned the car for the last 21 years. Uh, just started out as a standard XF for a few years just to drive round in. Originally then we uh, went back and painted it pink, put the V8 in it and we brought it to Summonats 11 years ago as a pink four-door and then you know, got in the top 20 back then, top sedan uh, awards for that, did the show circuit for 12 months and then we had a vision to make it into a two-door with saw side doors and a blown engine. And that vision then took us about seven years to what we've got today. The car actually has two computer systems. In the supercharger there's fuel injection that's actually got a computer system that runs that. There's also then a customised computer that runs the whole car and you just go through and it's got all separate icons that run the fuel injection, runs the engine diagnostics on it, also runs the airbag suspension. Complete touchscreen system and it just ran, runs by remote control. Someone else, I think, is, you know, once you've done Christmas Day and things like that, you get ready to come here, you meet a lot of different people, and I think you need to come to the Summer Nats at least once to experience, you know, not only what goes inside this hall, but, you know, the Saturday um, show and shine out on the arena and things like that. Um, it's just a good summertime event to come to. Fifty years. That is years and years and years 
of making the best air filters in the world. If you need a filter for your car, air filter, cabin filter, oil filter, go to knn.com or go to your local stockist. Superior airflow, superior performance, superior. Nullabain Tusk Street's a category of summonats where it's wild, aggressive, aggro, street registered vehicles. Summonats is aggressive cars, burnouts, attractive women, crowd smoke. It, it's just all summed up in one word, which is Summonats. The creation of this car would definitely have to be influenced by Holden's concept vehicle, the Coupe 60. Um, I thought that was a magnificent looking car and I think a lot of people agreed. And then the world changed and Holden was never going to build it. And so I saw an opportunity to jump in and build something unique. This is what's called a Phantom. It's a car that looks like the factory should have built it, but it actually doesn't exist. It is a 2010 HSV Malu Ute. The build process has only been 12 to 14 months, which everybody keeps telling me is pretty quick, but I was fairly impatient, so it felt like a long time. There's a method to the madness in choosing a ute in the fact that a ute has a longer wheelbase than a sedan. So between the wheels, that extra 100 uh, mil really suits the coupe proportions. Now, as you look at the car, when we started off with the ute, it had only done 1,500 kilometres before we drove it in the shop and started to cut it apart. We actually sliced it through here and everything from here back was just gone, complete bare shell. We then purchased the wreck of a sedan and got the roof and everything else, the boot, etc., welded it to the remainder of the ute to create the coupe. To make the coupe proportions really work, it was important that we altered the doors. So these doors are actually 287 millimetres longer than a standard ute door. All VEs, whether they're a ute or a sedan, actually have a dead straight uh, rear end of the door, which just wouldn't have suited this vehicle. So we've curved it as well as made it longer, moved the B-pillar, and that's created the real coupe proportions. Now, because it's a Malou ute, I've kept the Malou side skirt. So that shows how the car started from a Malou and ended up being a coupe. This is actually a $2,000 piece of real carbon fibre, but when we've done the paintwork and the carbon wrap, we've wrapped the real piece with the fake piece so that it looks the same. The car was pretty much straight red, and I, I thought, well, what else can we do? I've been coming a long time, I'm good mates with Chick, and I thought I'd do something. So I rang the office, sort of a bit of a secret squirrel job, and got the logo from them, and then came up with the concept and the bonnet I've um, wrapped with the new vinyl wrap from 3M and it's a matte black but I've overlaid it with a gloss print and when you read the bonnet it's actually all the categories that we've been able to win over the years in the 25 years. Our business pretty much was conceived as summer ads. I mean we're only running about a year or a year and a half before we started here. This industry keeps you very authentic with the customer. It's, you gotta you got have good products and we do so we, we're always excited to be able to launch things at Summonats. We think it's a great way to find out what, what customers think of our products because they don't hold back telling you whether that's good, bad or indifferent. But we think it's a great future for enthusiast-based products, both used at Summonats. But you know, if you can make it at Summonats, you, you kind of got a good chance of getting that into a retailer and building that whole base on products being bought by the enthusiasts because they're kind of the leaders. They're the, uh, the early adopters, as they call and uh, people are inclined to follow what enthusiasts use, so we're really excited about the future. Yes, Michael and I are high school sweethearts. Actually, that's what the paper said when they printed our wedding article. Yeah, we've been together for about 17 years. Started dating at high school and um, actually the cars have really, um, you know, I suppose helped us stay together because it's a common passion and we spend lots of time in the shed together and you know, working on the cars. Although Michael does all of the hard work, um, I'm certainly there to, to back him up. This is the first time at Someone Ads for the Tirana. It's actually our first time at Someone Ads, so coming all the way from South Australia, it is a big trip. It's been great so far. We first bought this car to the Summonats, Summonats 5. 
I brought the boys here with us. It has that whole family thing. The first year, we actually didn't win the summer nets in it. We, um, we came second or whatever it was for, for whatever reason. We came back the next year, which is summer nets six, and I, I actually got grand champion. Then I got grand champion at summer nets nine, 11 and 12 with the same car when it was white. Came back last year, the first time back with with um, the FC, which we call Trilogy now, and we we cleaned up. We won Grand Champion again, which was well, it was a pretty special effort. We got married about 12 months ago, and the, both the cars were in the wedding actually. So hence the reason that it took 17 years to get married was because the Minari had to be in the wedding, which is our first build, and then um, the Tirana, of course, had to be a wedding car as well. So it finally finished, and we we had the dream wedding. So it was great. Yeah, both my boys came home from hospital in the car, yeah. Someone said, why do I keep ch doing this car? And I said, well, it's part of our family. It'll never get sold. My boys will take it when I've had enough. And like I said, when I get go to the Kentucky Fried Oven and the boys are going to smoke it up out the front. So that's my last request, that they smoke the car up out the front when they smoke me up. I think Summer Nats has a bit of everything for everyone. So for someone who's never been before, um, it's got the elite cars, it's got the burnout cars, it's certainly got the entertainment for the boys. Um, but for the girls as well, um, there's lots and lots of things to do. And um, if you've got a little bit of a passion about cars or if you love cars, it entertains everybody, so it's great. After two days of judging, 3 p.m. this afternoon, we finished judging about 600 cars, and then all the, we go through, and the top 60 cars are posted on a whiteboard out the front, and there's probably 100 people staring at that whiteboard, just hoping their number's on that, and comes down the final 60, we open the roller door, we bring those cars in, and they set up in here. here to support my brother you know it's he's built a fantastic car we come to show some support see some great cars see some uh, fantastic uh, workmanship I think you just got all walks of life here you know you can go to some events and you know, sure you got your you got your yahoos here but you've got you know young people old people people that appreciate motor cars it's fantastic I just think there's a part of, it doesn't matter what age you are, there's something about a really nice car and the sound of it. Yeah. <laughs> it does it for me, I tell you. <laughs> a lot of the guys uh, that are that are with it and been doing it a few years, they're lined up, they're snuck up the front so they get the prime positions, but it's really best in, best dress because they've only got three hours to get prepared and the doors open to the public. This is a tribute, this vehicle. My father-in-law, who passed away six months ago, he's got another Monaro, he wanted to build an original. So he set off four years ago to build it. He got cancer about four years ago, because he died in the Gen July. His goal was to be at the Summer Nats this year, and we were going to go for the shot for the top 60. We certainly didn't think that he'd get this, you know, to get this far, I mean, it's just, a priceless moment. It's my birthday today, so I couldn't have asked yeah. for the better birthday present if I possibly tried. It's Dad's passion and it's Dad's life, and look, we couldn't be happier to be here representing for him. For him. Can't explain in words how excited we all are to be here. Fulfilled everything that Dad wanted to do. Yeah. His dream was to have the shockers and just to get here. He's not so physically here, but he's here he's with us. He's here with all of us. And the number plates, Dad's, Dad's HK, HK on, the, on the car, that's, that's all him. Three, two, one. The 
undercover cars is something that we put together over the last four or five years. So now we put them, we bring, brought them in last night. When there's nobody in the building, they clean them, prepare them, put the covers on them. Tonight, which is Friday at 8:30, pull those covers off, and it's just it become this become a really big event. When we open the doors and all the crowd come in, they started to form all around the cars, all the unveiled cars. You got cars, you got people ten deep around, right around the car. I couldn't get near it, but I'm just standing aside, watching over. Let's get out the way over there. And then we pull the covers off the fair lane. I could see Gary's face through the thing when the covers come off and you see the wows and the ahs of the crowd. It's special to be able to do it. The Red Barara, and that was a little bit of an old school play car, but man, people really loved, loved that car. very emotional having your wife, your daughter here and your family and friends that wouldn't usually come to an event like this, you know. Um, they turned up just for that. To get the covers off and the reaction from the crowd was gratifying, it really was. Beauty pageant on steroids, that's a really good description. <laughs> and, and a lot of egos. <laughs>
this weekend, a lot of it's built around this car. Yeah, so the car started as a green LS Monaro, 1973 Holden LS. It was green with a black vinyl roof and brown interior. And Nick, um, Nick, my son, drove it as a normal street car with a six-cylinder auto. And then we started what was going to be a mild rebuild. As we came to Summer Nats and went to Motor X, our level of ambition with the car changed. Having a father and son working together takes a lot of coordination and sacrifice of two people finding the right time. So lots of weekends, completely committed to it. Loss of your social life. To build a car, family and friends, I think, are one of the most important factors because they've got to sacrifice time with myself and dad and my brother who built most of the car. It's interesting because I've seen the whole family deal with this car and uh, the emotion around it. So I've seen the highs and the lows. I've seen mum dealing with dad being away a lot of the time, being in the shed, pottering around after dinner, early in the morning on the weekends. So she's made a big sacrifice in that regard. You know, she hasn't had a lot of uh, weekend time to do, you know, do family things. So, and from Nick and Dad's perspective, I've seen them uh, bond, uh, come closer together during the whole process. But I've also seen the, the arguments and the fights and the, you know, one of them storm, storming out of the shed because they've had a disagreement. Nick's favourite saying was, why don't we just stick it on eBay and get rid of it? <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's times like that when you just want to feel like giving up. But as you get close to the end, you realise that all the detail and all that attention pay is paying off and the car's looking great and, well, here it is now. Hi, I'm Dave Rayner, uh, General Manager and one of the co-owners of Rare Spears. Been in business now since the, the early 70s. We started off uh, only selling parts for 48, 215 and FJs, but that was a long time ago. And gradually the business has developed into what it is today, where we sell parts for all model Holdens and uh, all, all model Fords. In my youth, I mean, I would have killed to have someone like Rare Spares. I, I had, you know, a series of early Holdens. You couldn't find bits for them, though. You had to go to wrecking yards. <laughs> our 23rd year as the major supporting sponsor and it gave it's always given us a chance to showcase our company show everybody the new parts that we're making and it also gives us the opportunity to put money back into the industry that's been very good to us I think that everybody should go to a summer Nats. if you're interested in cars this is the premier of, uh, event in the southern hemisphere it's become much more family orientated there's lots of kids here and, and I love kids, so I think the event's matured. It's where you'll see the best cars, you'll have the best fun and it's a real experience. It was the original real car festival and it's the only one that really holds its own still, I reckon, personally. Because we present so many trophies in different categories, it does make it feel good because a lot of these people have been into the stores, they've bought their restoration or their special car into the store often to show us and then when you see them driven or trailered to an event like this and see the getting up shaking hands hand them a trophy it, it makes you feel really good well, uh, the top judge elite vehicle the street street magazine side is number 25 a passion purple 86 port falcon Definitely all the hard work over the last three, four years, definitely, you know, everything's come to fruition for us today. Look, there is a lot of competition here and, um, and the class that's here and um, the workmanship that's gone into a lot of these cars, like it was very hard to pick and obviously it was very close, but we're happy with the end result.
thing you see, obviously, is just the amount of people here, and that's really impressive. Uh, you, you know, you, you try and find a spot in the crowd to see all these hot cars, but it's never ending. You know, the, the cars are just, just keep going, coming down the street, and you get to see beautiful car after beautiful car, and it's a real assault on the senses, I guess. Best thing about Summer Notes for me uh, is just the whole culture. Being able to get here and talk to the people and how friendly everybody is here. It's, it's always a really great atmosphere. Best thing about Summer Notes is the bloke next to you. They actually uh, talk to you, look after you, and it's a rural friendly experience. My name's Alyssa Michelle. I'm the Miss Summer Notes coordinator. I've been coming out to Summer Nats for the last 13 years. I won Miss Summer Nats in 2002 and started running the competition about four years ago. I'm Cole Whelan, I'm from ACT and I'm actually here representing Miss Summer Nats 24. So I won last year and so this year I get to judge the beautiful girls this year. Guys, next up on stage we have a local girl from Canberra. Welcome, Neely Morgan. I love Summer Nats. All the great old cars, there's so much commitment in these. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the federal ties, Miss Summer Nats. so much to everyone. It was so much fun. Everyone was great and it was it was such a good experience. It was great. They were lovely. I'm so excited. I want to show everyone that Summer Nuts is not just a car festival. It's a festival. It's got everything. It's got food. It's got stores. It's got fashion. It's got fun. I'm really excited to represent Summer Nuts. Anest Iwata. What is that you say? Listen, Anest Iwata brings to the Australian market a wide range of equipment for the spraying of liquid coatings. Nice. These may be for automotive uses, both at production and refinish levels. They can even supply equipment for the beauty and film industries where it is possible to spray makeup, airbrush fingernails, body art, and spray on imitation suntans. Because who wouldn't want to have a suntan, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a HT Holden uh, Premier. It's got a 540 volume alcohol big block in it. Uh, right now I'm pretty nervous. It's a pretty big field here, but uh, just the rush it gives you and uh, the crowd that goes mental over here. Tires, you know, smashing the tires and all, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. My name's Michael Dobell from Adelaide. I drive a HQ1 tonner called Mr. HQ to you. I just love it. It's a passion now. I only started about a year and a half ago. I love it. John Elphick, I'm driving an XY Falcon. Getting together with mates, having a good time. It's great fun, mate. And I love burnouts. I love the crowd. I love just putting a show on. It's just great fun, it really is. What, what haven't I broken, eh? That'd be the list. Um, motors, gearboxes, diffs, but it's pretty reliable now and it's all worth it in the end, isn't it? My name's Matt Pennell and I'm driving a 1979 HZ World Body Ute. It's got a big block Chev in it, uh, supercharger 871, and uh, yeah, here to kill some tyres. Right, my name's Clint Ogilvy. I'll drive this here holding LC Toronto. <laughs> what don't I love about burnouts, man? 
It's, uh, it's the biggest adrenaline rush in the world. I, I love it. Big crowd, especially up here at Summonats, the biggest crowd in Australia. They're vocal, man, revs. It's just, I don't know, I don't know how to describe, man. It's just the best thing in the world. I'm the oldest bloke on the Burnouts Gear 25, mate, and I love it. Oh, mate, it's exhilarating, it's fun, it's fast. Pretty hard to die doing it, but it's good fun doing it, and you can hit the wall and laugh. Give up all the rubbish, give the alcohol away and the cigarettes and all the drugs and crap and spend your money on your car because it's a fantastic result. People respect you and it's a great thing to do, you know. And all the other stuff doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> Isn't it funny? There I am. The two sides of Chick Henry. The one side that said, let's keep the event tidy and responsible. The other side would be saying, Yahoo, look at this. This is how it should be. But now I've got to go back to being responsible again. So, oh God, let's keep it under control. God damn, people are having a lot of fun. I'm the uh, Security Operations Manager for Summonats. I've been involved, uh, this is my seventh event. I'm a former police officer, uh, 22 years in the, in the cops. Uh, this room that you're in now is what's called the uh, event control, or the command post for the event. It's broken up into four zones. We have four communication officers on this side. I sort of look after the operational aspects. Dave Rugendike and Michael O'Hara 
uh, obviously look after all the entrance, the ticketing, the processes, but virtually anything that comes and goes through the event comes through this operations centre. It's open from Wednesday and it closes about 7 o'clock on Sunday. The importance of the event is the ability to get people uh, that understand the event first of all and then can pass on their information to people like myself that don't know anything about cars realistically but uh, understand people and, and managing events and managing people. I was out there in Tough Street uh, quarter to three to quarter to four today and it is, uh, you know, extremely busy. There's a lot of people there, and uh, it is. It's uh, it's an eye-opening wow factor of uh, something. Else. I mean, I can't explain it. You know, it's you need to come here and look at the people and the cars and the, you know, it's uh, yeah, it's an amazing thing. The elite cars come out of the hall. They've been in the top top 60 shows since last night. They're the, the top judged cars at the event. They come out of the uh, judging hall, across through the crowd and onto the arena and line up. And they then all move in in a large parade lap and start doing laps of the trotting track. But this is the opportunity for the spectators who've been here all day, who may have been on the arena or in the judging hall, they get a good snapshot of all the good cars that are at the event. For me, the Super Cruise is a big part of it, you know what I mean? I want to win Grand Champion and you've got to do the Super Cruise, you've got to complete the Super Cruise to, to be eligible for that, you know what I mean? To show that, one, you're prepared to build a car, but more than anything, you're actually prepared to drive the car as well, you know what I mean? And, show it off to the public, they come out here, they pay money to, to see the cars, so you want to put on a good spectacle for them, yeah. In tonight's driving event is the, I suppose, the motor car to a certain degree on the grass. Um, so basically you've got to go in and out of a couple of witches' hats, into a couple of little bays, uh, just try and nail a really good time is what it comes down to, yeah. Oh, we know what we're in for. We are, yeah. yeah. We, we first came, love it, mate. first came to the Summit Axe about two years or three years ago. We played. Yeah, two years ago. And uh, we was up on the grandstand. Actually, they had the stage set up there, but this is unreal. It's, it's going to be a dust bowl, but it's unreal. Yeah. Yeah. Beard, beard, donks, and boobs. Yeah. What a better weekend. Podcast 5, we have crowd favourite Lynchy, Matt Watts. Summon that's 33, Burnout Masters champion Rick Fuller. We've also got Marv from Street Machine and heaps of stuff to give away. Join Webby and I and these mad guests next Tuesday at 8.30pm. Sunday morning, how did you pull up after last night? Wasn't it fantastic? And if you're still asleep, wake up! Thank you very much, I bet you like that one. Yeah, look, it's a big day today, and I know it looks like there's the uh, a bit of rain around. The weatherman is telling me it's gonna rain today, but don't let that stop you. We know the rain doesn't stop summer. That's the, the burnout competition is on today, the Liquid Molly Summer That's Burnout Championship, the uh, Liquid Molly National Burnout Masters. It was a final five. There were so many of them it, that were so very good. It's a final 10. That's happening this afternoon, and lots more stuff going on. We'll see what happens with the rain, but if you keep it locked on to Radio Rev Head, trust me, we shall tell you what's going on. It's Street Machine Magazine, Summer Nats number 25, proudly supported by Rare Spares, the Chrome Jubilee Edition. In the go to Wowie, 
people used to, back in the older days, they used to just putter along there and just to make it, but now it's really a serious event. And they've got to be really, do really good times in that. And interestingly enough, I think last year, the car that won the grand champion actually won his event in the go Wo. So yeah, they've got to be serious contenders. I've organised helmets and shoes. We've got three cars here this morning. It's a Sunday morning. We're shooting for the final, the final event of the Grand Champion. So we've got three really, really close. The summer that's been a great rain 16 years a lot of fun all in the dyno i'll tell you what it's absolute magic in here this is horsepower heaven <laughs> the cars come in they get an opportunity there's two different type of competitions we're running one is the horsepower clinic or the dyno clinic where the entrants have an opportunity to bring their cars in free run them on the dyno and then go away and amend little faults. Then we've also got the mainline Horsepower Heroes competition, which becomes naturally aspirated. That is a car directing car. And then we also have the forced induction where about superchargers, blowers, you name it, whatever they want to run on it, which shows up the big end cars. And of course, they're the big horsepower cars. Uh, the dyno works by, essentially we have a big electronic uh, magnetic brake in the dyno bed and uh, we apply it load to that and actually retards the car from accelerating. So the amount of load that we put in essentially measures how much horsepower the car has. How does that work? Yeah, we basically choose a, a, a gear, typically it might be fourth gear and a six speed manual and we just basically do a, a test from a low road speed up to a high road speed and we choose a range where the car basically make, will, will make peak power within that range and when it makes peak power, it generally noses over, we stop the test and we generally do a, a, most of the time an average of a three runs. Boys at work sort of came to came to us and they said, you know, let's do a build a ride car or, you know, a car to showcase all of our aftermarket um, suppliers' products. And just tell the fans, you know, this is what you can do to a car. And you know, it's one of those cars that you can have fun with and showcase, you know, what you can do to a vehicle in Australia using Australian manufactured products. Oh, an event like Summer Nats is, is very important. It ticks all the boxes from us because, you know, there's people coming to talk to us from WA, the Northern Territory, from Adelaide, from Victoria, and also Queensland, not only Sydney as well. So that's why we come here, it's because it's a national event. It's not just a state-based event. To be Grand Champion, it is more than just the car. So all of the cars in here are, are capable of, of winning Grand Champion. Then it's got to be and get at least 10 votes, or the more it gets in people's choice. And then get out there and drive your car. And then it's all those points are accumulated over that, so it's got to be go, show, and be popular with the public.
Uh, very important. I've wanted it for probably 10 years now. Um, yeah, it's something I've strived for for a long time. Um, my family supported me through it, you know what I mean? It took a lot of hard work, so I put them through a lot over a five-year period building, building the car. Um, I've had the car since I was 16. It was actually my first car. Um, and at Summon at 14, I won uh, Top Streeter. And from there, I kind of wanted to achieve and go to Grand Champion, you know what I mean? So, it's, yeah, it's been a long time coming. Well, you know, I've been to uh, Goodwood Festival of Speed and I've been to the Monterey and uh, all of most of these sort of events and this is certainly unique, there's no doubt about it. It's absolutely fantastic. I mean, I, the passion uh, that the people are showing and, and the family atmosphere is great. I mean, they, they, they all get in and help with the car like if it's the family dog, you know, and uh, it's just a great atmosphere. It, it is my first time, but it won't be my last time having a ball. something really crazy for Summonats. Why don't we break a record of the most amount of cars on the burnout pad doing a burnout at the same time? Now, I was told it was three, so I thought we can do a bit better than that. We're gonna line them all up, face the grandstand. We're gonna bring in Bark Bess right here. We're gonna absolutely nail 10 seconds on the throttle and we don't know what's gonna happen, but I hope it's gonna be entertaining. turn up to uh, the Summonats here for example it's just uh, yeah, big uh, awe for everybody they turn up and they just want to see what's inside so once uh, everything opens up and everyone gets to have a look inside and have a beer off the truck like that's the highlight everyone gets to have a beer off the truck they can stand on the balcony and wave to their mates oh, you, this we got a one seat in the house like you won't get a better view from here we overlook the track uh, yeah cr the crowd and the grandstand look at us and wonder what we're doing and we're looking back at them thinking we've got the best view in the house where they think they have really started with one man, John Peterson, 30 years ago, did a skid and caught on to everybody. Yeah, Burnout's in the summer nights, I mean this is where it all started, I remember many years ago I watched uh, Mr Peterson and his Zodiac uh, Zephyr and I thought to myself, boy, oh boy that guy knows how to drive that car. I mean when we started doing it here, you drove the car here, you done it, you drove home again, there were 20, maybe 30 cars. You've got to be sharp as, you have the best car, be the best driver to win a burning contest at the Summer Nats. It's changed your driving laws, because if, we, if you Australians came to America, we'd have to change our driving laws. Yes, fortunately for you, we don't. Hello, this is going to be enormous. This is the National Burnout Masters, and this is the Liqui Moly Power Pit. And we are about to tear it to bits with Brad Manane, the 72 Holden Tirana LJ. People would be bowing anyway, but have a look at the way this thing's presented. And good, healthy burnout to kick things off. Effortless burnout to get things started. Nice little 360. Manane out of Delacombe in Victoria. Spectacular paint job. Crowd absolutely loving it. Everybody loves some serious Tirana muscle. And just look at this crowd. Liqui Molly right behind the Burnout Masters. Oh, that was close. Not much margin for error, is there? Easily has 
always you've got to have a passenger who's got the obligatory one finger out the window. Oh, good work. Manane gets the crowd pumped up. And the big fella's cranking as well. Nice way to kick things off for the final. 24 cars are normally whittled down to five on the final. It was so close to competition. This year they went to 10. Adam Slorick. And have a look at the misses. Going off like a frog in a sock already. The ATS automatic numb nuts. Holden Ute. Now Slorick a six cylinder. Beautiful work inside too, isn't it? This is tough for a six. Slorick, good aggressive spin. <laughs> Have a look at the misses. He loves it. Satin Black 67 Holden HR. My old man had one. Probably never did this kind of work. Oh, that's close to the edge, isn't it? Right up against the guardrail. Liquamoli burnout pit. <laughs> See what's hanging underneath the number plate at the back? They're prone. Good, strong burnout. All this from a six. Warm. Starting to get very warm. Can he get through the rubber in time? So if he's watching the gauges. If he's not, the view through the windscreen and the coolant flying everywhere will tell him. Oh, that's a mighty burnout for a six. Laura, what a job. Back through the entry point and back out again. And there are Holden tears spewing out everywhere here, and he's not laying off it. <laughs> Obviously, Sloro is the quiet one. The missus is in charge of firing up the crowd. He's just about got it, and he does. Gee, that's a stout burnout for a six-cylinder, isn't it? ATS Automatics, tired, torturing trans, and the crowd loving it. says, eat that. Threw the helmet down. And the missus. See the fun at a tax convention. So from some early model old school action to some late model laying it down stuff with Peter Gray. 2005 Holden Monaro with Hogs Breath racing on board. Holden genuine parts. Burnouts have gone corporate. The Liquamoly Super Pit getting a serious workout. Peter Gray, whose wife's a pretty handy burnout star in her own right. Debbie, of course, she got knocked out yesterday. Didn't make it through to the final. Fairly slow, deliberate approach. Everyone has their own unique style to bring to the table. This is more of a creeping one. Oh, the double-hander out the window is always big. Right up against the guardrail. Pete from Sylvan in Victoria. And the Holden Monaro Coupe. No wonder the Yanks loved them when we sent them over to sell over there. Oh, gee, there's no room for error, is there? Gray in the tight con. Let's have a look at the smoke! Very much a creeper. He's very methodical with his burnout. Doesn't fling the car around. Ooh. Looks like we might be close to breaking through on the rubber here. Definitely got the left rear. Now he's getting aggressive with it. And bang the second one out as well. Great work for Gray. Different kind of style, more deliberate. Of course, you've got to get out and go off. All part of the deal. 
Gets the crowd revved up. Goes a bit of helmet gear there as well. <laughs> That's not always something you expect. Good work. The Hogs Breath Cafe entry. Happy with that. <laughs> it might have been a signal to the Ford fans and I'm not really sure. Nice work, a bow to the crowd. Canberra, ACT, home to Parliament House, home to the Australian War Memorial. This is an important place. Canberra is important. Telstra Tower, Fishwick Adult Shops, and in January, some of the best burnouts you'll ever see. We'd like to invite you to come to Canberra because they look after us and we want you to look after them. And because they look after us, it means we can look after you in January for four days at the best car festival in the world. Josh Bennis, Canberra. We get set for Donny Elphick. You saw some holding muscle. How about a bit of blue oval grunt right now? On gas, this thing. Away it runs. Look at this. Plenty of smoke. Passenger got the onboard camera. <laughs> The Ford Racing jersey, the matte black bucket helmet. I love it. No frills, Donny Elphick. Elbow out the window. Trucker style. He's doing it easy, isn't he? Oh my goodness, it's like he's parking at the local shopping centre. No emotion. He's the Terminator. This oh, spins the wheel. Love it. Somewhere in there is Don Elphick. He emerges. Oh man. From Forest Hill in New South Wales, the 71 Falcon XY. Four fans realizing they're in with a chance here. Oh, the point. Always a good one for the judges. This is a tough burnout. How casual is he? Just whistling it around. Belt about to come off. We don't need the seatbelt anymore, apparently. Oh. Happy with the result. That is a stout burnout. How casual is this play? Yep, that'll do me. Eat that. Don Elphick, that will be right up there. We're all competing for the John Peterson Award the National Burnout Masters. This bloke goes way back. He's been doing burnouts for 20 years, sick Mick Rasher. In the little Toyota on roids. Look at that, even before he's got out of the launch pad, he's done a couple of 360s. The big Aussie Mick out the window as well. New legal powerhouse entry. He's always been like this. I remember rightly, he used to have an LJ Tirana with a 350 Chev. He used to go pretty hard like this thing is as well. The 73 Toyota Corolla KE20 Coupe. <laughs> Look at all the iPhones. Everyone trying to get a shot of Mick Bracha. Love that. Yep. This is the kind of star that's made him one of the... Burnout favourites. Look at the rubber! <laughs> well, Brasher, absolutely on it here. Ooh, might have just shut down a little early. So, Brasher might be putting this one to bed early, but man, he absolutely wowed them. This is the premier burnout competition in the country. Now, panorama of melting rubber it is. Jason Earl now. Ford action for you, the 82 Ford Fairmont XE. And it lights up easy early. Nice artwork on here as well. The Liquid Molly Burnout Masters, the big Ford flag comes out. Oh, very aggressive getting in. Gotta love that. When you have a good crack right off the top, gets everybody pumped up. This is holding the Ford flag, both the double Ford flags now. 
will be sticking it right up to Chev and Holden fans. How will he fare in that? So this is the only guy in the field naturally aspirated. No blower. So this is going to be a big effort. This thing is loaded with onboard cameras. Like the Big Brother house in there. Plenty of smoke. Doing a good job is Earl. As I said, the only naturally aspirated vehicle out there, everything else is blown to the max. And this is a solid burnout. Starting to get the right rear, it's done. That's a good job from Earl. Has to be happy with that. James Earl from Clermont in Queensland. Gives <laughs> it the big wave. That's a solid job. That's going to get. You wouldn't want to be a judge in this competition so far. Matthew Power with a paint on this thing, a very deliberate approach. The 72 Holden HQ one tonner. That is a sweet ride. Imagine the load these motors are under at this point. The big Chev. No airflow to say the least to keep these things cool, to help them work. Working in a effectively a 30 to 40 meter strip and dense smoke. These things aren't exactly breathing anything but their own tire smoke, you would think. Good classy burnout to start things off. Working well in tight spaces. Just like Ralph Fiennes on that Qantas flight. Ooh, good smoke running out of room here. Oh, it does it easy! How's the casual nature of that? Oh, how do you get a photo of that? Photographers down there trying to get shots and... Honestly, more smoke than a Rastafarian Christmas party out there. What's been amazing about this run from Power is he hasn't used the tennis court. He hasn't used the actual big backyard here. He's just been charging up and down the driveway, so he's been manoeuvring around in tight confines the whole time. And technically, that is a superb burnout. Very nice job. The Liqui Moly Power Pit getting a workout, but only in the narrow bits. Power, superb. Right rear about to give away. And he's seriously unloading some horsepower through those rear tires. Look at the distortion in the rubber there. This is a superb job. Look at the crowd. And the judges, very impressed. And power <laughs> on the rims now. Refuses to get out of the bucket. <laughs> Handy job. Crowd will love this. So will the judges. Power. It is a tough burnout. So power leaves the arena. High fives all round. <laughs> it is just a culture. It is more than just a burnout. Oh, the look over. Shall we do it? Yeah, let's do it. Beautiful looking van. Aaron Mackley. The 71 Holden HG. This thing is wide open. Can't even see the butterflies. It's pinned. Look at this. So forget the slow, deliberate approach, just nail it. Oh man. Oh, look inside the car. You can't see a thing in there. It's like a Cheech and Chong movie. <laughs> he sticks his head out, it's too late. That will kill you in burnout competition when you have to shut down, but what else could he do? They can't see a thing in there. Spectacular and somewhat spicy airbrushing on this car as well. <laughs> Aaron Mackley. Aren't there some great characters? She doesn't even seem like she's rattled. Look at the debris. Rubber from previous burnouts as well as fresh stuff. And this is incredible. Somewhere in the midst of all that is Mackley. Sweet looking fantasy man. Really killed him early having to shut down. Bit of one hander action here. Oh, right out to the guardrail. 
Oh, geez, you see it kick in there. We're going to get the tyres for sure here. A lot of sparks. We've at least got one there as well. Oh, just pulls up to the crowd and gives it a big black. Nice work, Mackley. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Rubber on fire as well. Oh, throws the helmet. Well, he's disappointed, you can tell. He knows. He couldn't see. It was absolutely like a nightclub dance floor in there. He goes, I couldn't see. He knows it's killed him points-wise. I used to work in a panel shop as a spray painter. True story. I used to turn up to work early every single day. One day, I was 10 minutes late. The boss said to me, why are you late? And because I was a young smart I said, you never thank me when I'm 15 minutes early. Not only did that go down like a mouth full of nails, I had to wash the entire complex for a week. And I was a painter. I wanted to paint. And our paint supplier at the time was PPG. These guys. So if you want to use the best paint in the world, don't be a smart to your boss. Be nice. Be kind. PPG. Get the finish on your car that you need. Shiny. Shiny. Can't see. Craig Wadette. <laughs> Even the number plates reflect their style. Right up to the liquid molly sign in. The entry point, very narrow. Beautiful paint job on this thing as well. We're dead. In the 84 Holden Commodore from Fig Tree in New South Wales. Thanks. You're going to have to come up with something absolutely superb to win this competition. The Liqui Moly Burnout Masters. The Baptists of Burnouts. If you win this, you really are the king. You see him on and off the gas, but not really that far off. It's just breathing it occasionally. Somewhere he's in there. With that. Jeez, as a judge, how do you not get numb to what you're seeing? How do you pick out individuals? This is a stout burnout. Oh, good work there. Gotta love the big aggressive flicks. Working the wheel. And listen to the throttle. Oh, did he nail the guardrail then? Just a bit of a lick. No harm, no foul. Oh, this thing's getting an absolute belting. Great job from Wadet. Got to be happy with that. The crowd love. There's the damage on that left rear quarter panel. Oh, now this is interesting. Peter Gramusa. And have a look at the bloke with him. That is Charlie Hutton. Legendary paint man from the American Hot Rod TV side of things. And just look at Gramusa! Holy cow! He just threw that sucker in! Ended up right up against the guardrail. All oh, complications here. Charlie's loving it. He's got the iPhone recording all of it. It fires again. Look how close did he get to the street machine sign there? What a spectacular XA this is. Peter Gramusa, the 73 Gord Gold Falcon XA Ute. Listen to this thing. <laughs> you don't suppose Charlie Hutton's enjoying the ride? He <laughs> can't see. Have a look at him, he's getting the crowd going, he knows what to do. It's an Australia-USA combination here. Gramusa, how good is he? Where's the car? Somewhere in there, Charlie can't even see. Oh, they just hit the wall! You see Hutton actually bounce in the seat. Crowd loving this, Gramusa will know that he's running out of space and running out of vision. Bugger it, he says. Put it in reverse, get the thing out of here and put on a show. This is beyond winning now. He's had to breathe it a couple of times and that means he's gonna go feral. Look at the attitude of this thing. Crowd loving it. 
And certainly Charlie Hutton from the United States enjoying it. There it is. The big love bite. The liquid molly love bite. Oh! <laughs> you can't accuse him of not having a go, can you? That is superb. So, a great job from Dramusa. It won't be enough to win, you wouldn't think, with a couple of pauses there. But he bangs it up, leaving the arena. Well done. I bet the Yank enjoyed that. Unfreaking believable, dude. You guys know how to have a good time in Australia. So, after two massive days of the best burnout this country has ever seen, the scenes that look like they're out of the movie Platoon, we crown the winner of the John Peterson Award, Don Elphick. He wins the Liquid Molly Burnout Masters. Well, we've, I've been doing burnouts, watching burnouts ever since I was a little man. Um, Chris Christo, Gary Myers, um, they're the reason why I'm here doing skids, man. So. It's, this is one of the coolest things I've ever done. It hasn't sunk in yet. All the guys here are so good. The driving, the cars, the reliability um, is off tap. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's very difficult and I'm very, very proud to have done what I've done. This is like winning the Olympic gold medal. So this is the biggest burnout competition in Australia. And, yeah, we just got the gold, mate. The future of the Summer Nats is... Is, it's really strong. We, um, we were really happy today at the event. We made a decision to announce that we were going to be here at least for 2013. And we did that without getting everything that we, all the assurances we wanted from the ACT government. We've taken a punt on doing that because we wanted our entrants and our fans and our sponsors and stakeholders to feel confident that they know where they're going to be next year. Uh, we want to stay here in Canberra and we're going to work very, very hard with the government, who also want us to be here, to make that happen in a much longer term. There's a great responsibility with owning the Summonats. The first responsibility is to protect the legacy that Chick Henry has set up here. He's a, an incredible man who has created something incredibly unique and special to a lot of people. That's the first part of our responsibility. The second part of our responsibility, and that's something that's become clearer to us this year, is to advocate for our community, for our people. I'm not a car person, I haven't come from there, but I, I know people and I understand what's important to people. And probably a couple of days ago, I got tired of trying to defend ourselves against the, against the constant criticism or the constant stereotyping. And it was, again, it was, that was one of those sort of watershed moments when I realised I don't need to justify these people. These are people who love cars. And that's the one thing that unifies them together. We, we're a very broad church at the Summer Nats. People, there are people here who come from all demographics, all ethnic backgrounds, all, all, all stratas of society. And that responsibility for us to tell the wider community who love to poo-poo people that they don't understand is to say, back off, we are just people, we are people who love cars and that's the only thing that you know about us because we come to the summer nights. You can't judge us about our behaviour or anything else just because of that. If you said that about any other group of people, you know what you'd be called.
the Summonats V8. It's 2012. I'll tell you, we are up for a great year. I